Listen, when Jinx isn't out working the corner, she's out here working these fools on Wi-Fi battles, and today I've got a really good one for you. As per usual, I've got a team of delinquents ready to see what I can make happen, whereas my opponent does have some scary Pokemon over there. There's the Dragonite, Skarmory's kind of an issue, there's stuff like Breloom. Overall, uh, looking like a pretty good match, so let's get into it. So, from looking at the team preview, I was actually expecting them to lead off with the Skarmory. It actually turns out to be Starmie as I toss out the main Ho Frostitute. Um, my initial plan is pretty much just to go for a lovely kiss against the Skarmory, but I figure, you know what, I'm just going to stay in here and do the same exact thing. Uh, there's nothing really that Starmie can do to me that'll, uh, that'll do too much. So, he actually stays in, just kind of scouts out and goes for a Psychic. It's actually not too bad of a play just because of the fact that this thing is likely going to be natural cure um, but i wasn't sure if this thing was going to switch either way i'm just going to plant one right on him and that puts his ass to sleep um, as jinx you know generally does there's two things that are certain when you're playing against my girl here either you're going to get lovely kissed or you're going to get destroyed and most of the time it's probably going to be both but <laughs> he ends up switching out the starmy here goes into the drapion as i just click ice beam definitely expecting a switch realizing that ice beam actually uh, it hits pretty much everything for pretty solid damage, especially um, as I'm just max special attack. I actually am not Life Orb anymore. This is a Focus Sash Jinx just to ensure uh, that I can try to get that lead Lovely Kiss off. But um, not going to be too worried about that as the Ice Beam actually does well over half. And now unless this is like a weird Scarf Drapion, it's just going to go down to another one. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to click Ice Beam again. I have no reason not to. And that takes care of Drapion early. So that's a pretty big threat out of the way. And Jinx is already looking nice. So we're out here feeling ourselves up 6-5, and he decides to go right back into Starmie, and after switching out, of course, he's no longer asleep. And I'm like, you know what, I've got something to say about that, I'm gonna go for a lovely kiss again. Knowing that Starmie really can't do anything, it actually ends up going for a Surf, and my dry ass just soaks that up. Jinx is the type of Pokemon that you do not see competitively, and people forget <laughs> about the fact that for whatever reason, uh, they gave this thing dry skin. So I soak that up, I'm looking nice and moisturized out here, I'm glowing. And he is going to end up switching that thing directly back out again because he's like, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do to this Jinx. It's, it's really becoming an issue. <laughs> um, I did actually end up putting it asleep, which I probably shouldn't have. I probably should have just gone for damage. Uh, however, Jinx loves to be a menace, and so that's what I'm going to do. Anyway, um, the switch is into the Gastrodon, which is a pretty decent special defense wall that can kind of soak up any attack that this thing can throw at it. Now, I can decide to stay in and Lovely Kiss this. Uh, considering that the Starmie switched out and is no longer asleep after Natural Cure. But I decide I've been really lucky hitting two. The accuracy is shit, and I know that Jinx is not going to hit another one. So I'm just going to go right into the Shaman, uh, who obviously can come in and scare the hell out of this Gastrodon, knowing that there's not really much that this thing can go for. It ends up being an Earth Power, and I suppose if it is carrying Ice Beam, it could go for that. Um, I'm just going to stay in and go for the obvious play. I don't want to overpredict here. I decided to just go for the Seed Flare. Um, I do know that I, I definitely need Shaman to be able to take care of this Gastrodon, unless I can whittle it down uh, another way. But having this Hedgehog around is going to be super nice. But he ends up switching out, goes right into the Skarmory, and of course, I miss my Seed Flare. So that's what I get for landing two lovely kisses. And now I have to get out of here, because like I said, Shaman is my best answer to the Gastrodon. And I want to save that thing for later. So I decide to go into Snowball. The Golem is looking extra round today. Shout out to shout out to you for keeping your figure. You love to see it. Um, but I mainly switch into this thing because I wanted to come in before the Stealth Rock happens. Uh, and that is because this gimmick with this, this, uh, this Golem kind of relies on having Sturdy still intact. So knowing that this thing's probably going to want to switch out here, I just decide to go right for the Stealth Rock of my own. And that's going to really help out in the long game. Uh, with switching, especially because they have things like the Dragonite over there, so I can get that to switch into Stealth Rock um, and kind of ruin that thing's day and just have a good time doing it. So, unfortunately, Gastrodon comes back in. This is generally the menace of the team. Whenever you plan against a Gastrodon, unless you've got, you know, a solid grass type or, like, multiple options for that, it's going to be annoying as hell to kill. Um, but, of course, I do have my, my Hell Salad, and that is the absolute arch nemesis of this snail. I guess if I was, like, a, a, a salty Hell Salad, I don't know. But, goes for the Earth Power. Um, don't have to worry about that, of course. As long as I can, can keep this thing around for a Seed Flare, I can kind of force this Gastrodon to switch out pretty easily. Now, the last time this situation happened, he switched directly into Skarmory, um, and that was a great matchup against the Shaman. However, I'm not expecting the same thing to happen twice. 
Um, so I'm actually just going to stay. I'm going to go for the Seed Flare just to see what happens. As he actually ends up switching into the Breloom, to my surprise, which is pretty solid. Um, I don't know. Maybe he was expecting a double switch, knowing that I thought his Skarmory was going to come in. Either way, I just go for the brain dead play of just clicking Seed Flare again, because that's what Little Shaman does best. And it actually works out. Sometimes the best play is to just do what you can do. Um, I, I mainly decided to go for that, because if he did go Skarmory, I could just switch right out into... Something like Slowbro, who can take that really easily, or potentially even go back or go into my Kabutops to try to get a Rapid Spin. Um, so it was kind of worth the, the risk for me to just stay in and go for that. And the Breloom, for some reason, does decide to stay in and go for the Mach Punch. Maybe thought that they were going to be able to grab the kill there. Uh, unfortunately for them, the Hell Salad comes out on top. I'm able to knock it out with a Psychic. Plus, uh, I did get a special defense drop. So you breathe in that thing's direction. That Breloom was going down. And that is a, another big threat, you know, out of the way. So... Now they decide to go into Starmie, and now I'm thinking I know exactly what this Starmie w wants to do. I can see right through that little gem eye of this fucking thing, and I know he wants to Rapid Spin. So I'm thinking if Shaman's tiny little hedgehog ass can live that, I can actually basically trade Stealth Rock being up for a kill on this Starmie. Now it does actually knock me to 4 HP, which is absolutely amazing, and now I fire off another Seed Flare. Luckily do not miss, and that is going to take care of the Starmie. I'm totally fine with the Stealth Rock being taken away because... I can definitely set it back up with the golem if needed. Um, however, it is kind of scary having that gone, now having to worry about stuff like the Dragonite. So we knocked each other out and the battlefield is looking empty as hell, but I know exactly what's about to happen here. He sees the opening for the Dragonite sweep and I know it's about to happen as well. So he brings in old Tiny Wings as I decide to go into Kabutops, ready to just give him a nice little hug. Um, so I know on my life that this Dragonite is about to go for the Dragon Dance. There's really no scenario where it does not. So I can get a Stealth, or I can, I can get a Rapid Spin, get rid of the Stealth Rock, and then once that's taken care of, it really does not matter how many setups this Dragonite has, the Golem will be able to take care of it. So uh, I go for the Rapid Spin there, get that nice little bit of chip damage, um, and unfortunately after a speed boost, we're both sitting at plus one and he outsped me before, so I'm not able to go for a Stone Edge here. Um, but I'm just going to go for an Aqua Jet, get that last little bit of chip, does not really matter a whole lot. Um, because I've kind of set it up for Golem to be able to do uh, his, his Golem thing. So, Aqua Jet doesn't do a whole lot there, he's going to oh, go ahead and finish me off with an Earthquake. But Kabutops did exactly what I needed to do, and that was essentially just contracting my dude out for a little rock removal. So, that opens the door for Golem to do what it needs to do, and this is a great lesson in Hazard Control can kind of swing a match in your way if if used effectively. So in comes Snowball. Now I know of course this Dragonite at plus one is going to be able to knock me down to sturdy. It's about scary as hell, but I have removed its multi-scale and all I have to do is land this here Stone Edge. So the Earthquake happens, knocks me down to one. Thank you No Stealth Rock for ruining that. Um, and then I do actually land the Stone Edge, which is amazing. And this Golem has been super fun to use because this thing is not done yet. He actually still has um, his berry, which allows me to basically outspeed as long as I'm in red health. So pair that with the uh, with the sturdy ability, and you've got your workings of a nice scary boulder. So uh, in comes the Skarmory. I kind of want to go for the Stone Edge, but I'm like, fuck it. I'm just gonna click Explosion. There's really no. Uh, I don't have to want to worry about missing um, the Stone Edge. So the Custat Berry allows me to move first. I'm gonna explode on this big ass metal bird, which really is. Uh, not gonna do a whole lot because it's you know a big metal bird, but snowball did what it needed to do It was basically there as an answer for the Dragonite and that is looking solid He goes for a brave bird against the air which doesn't do anything of course and now I get the uh, The door open to switch into whatever I like and it's back to the jinx We have not forgotten about the main shorty we come in um, And I can just go right for a lovely kiss. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna smooch this thing again <laughs> the triple smooch in one battle uh, it does land, luckily. Jinx did not forget to put her contacts in today, and thank fuck, because nothing's worse than a Jinx that can't see shit. So, um, I get that thing to sleep, and I'm thinking Ice Beam's probably close to a kill, so I probably didn't really need to go for the lovely kiss, but, you know, I'm Jinx, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm obligated to. Um, surprisingly, this, this Garmory actually even has a Citrus Berry, which you don't see all that often, but doesn't really... End up making a difference here because, of course, the, one more Ice Beam is going to be able to finish this thing off. And you've got to just appreciate the finest of work that this, this Jinx is putting in. Um, I mean, even if I missed the Lovely Kiss, uh, the Brave Bird recoil would have done a lot. I probably could have potentially lived it and then hit it with an Ice Beam. If I would have gone for Ice Beam first turn, it, it, it wouldn't have really mattered. But still, putting things to sleep is quite satisfying. And in comes the very last Pokemon, which is going to be 
the Gastrodon. Now, the Gastrodon is a Pokemon that kind of relies on help from its friends. If it's the last one left, it really doesn't have the offensive power to be able to really do much. Um, so I ended up going for the Psychic there. I actually ended up getting the special defense drop, and I've been honestly quite lucky this match. I, I will say that the luck has definitely been on my side, but... You know, that's the fucking way she goes, is we're playing Pokemon here. But it goes for an Earth Power, I'm able to easily live like freaking 12 more of those things, and then I can fire off another Psychic, and with the special defense drop, it actually still doesn't kill, because Gastron is just a bulky bitch. A couple of, a couple of thick girls over here, but I can still live in Earth Power, so I mean, all I basically have to do is just mash A on the old Joy-Con here, and that's going to be pretty much at the end of the match, so... Thank you guys very much for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'm having fun with these Wi-Fi battles, trying to get uh, send off Gen 4 as as we as much as I can because it's gonna be the last time that we can really play, you know, Wi-Fi battles when Gen 4 is like the newest meta. So, again, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, and I will see you next time. Peace out.